beast, isn't they? Chuff the bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just concentrating on not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boat. Called him, man. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same, same all the time. We want something different. A good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. <laughs> I've only just put this one, this rod down, and oh my word, really shallow here. It's only about eight feet deep. I've got two rods at the back with uh, frozen hardback crab, and this beautiful black bream, first one of the year. What a stunner! Oh mate, that is just absolutely stunning. That is fighting fit, breeding fish. I've been going straight back in, my mate. My mate. Look at, oh, careful, careful, careful. Look at that. <laughs> what a stunning black bream. The eyes on that. Absolutely. Oh, here we go. Here we, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to get you back before we go too crazy. Ciao, and she's gone. <laughs> Absolutely stunning, right? So we haven't even got the last rod set up yet. So that's the rig that that was just caught on. It is just a three boom or three wire boom rig. And something I'm trying out because I was told this, I can't remember who told me, it might've been Mike Cave. I think it was Mike, forgive me if I'm wrong. It's just a three boom rig tipped off with tiny little squidlets. Um, but it's all in the orange bead. They love the bead. It might have been Jim, actually. It's Jim or Mike, I can't remember. I've got a rubbish memory at the best of times. But yeah, first fish of the year out on Molly Moo, my little 16 foot warrior. So I did try to go offshore this morning. I headed out to the back of the needles. I got to the needles and it was like nah <laughs> we're too much swell there was there was a storm yesterday i half guessed it would be too much so i've come inshore it's the rods at the back that i'm more interested in i'm still rigging up these smaller rods these are those absolutely love them actually i've got two different reel setups but these are the um, pen conflict jigging rods they're only six foot they've got loads of power in them um, and this one's got the Pen Battle 3000, and this one's got the Shimano Sahara. Both with 30 pound braid. And these will cope with pretty much anything, to be honest. But what I like about them is how compact they are on the boat. Um, and, yeah, and, and, and I'll rig them up differently for each one. Let's get my other bits and doings out. Oh. So I've got both my rod breasts out. I've got four rods. This is the th fourth rod to be rigged. Um, and on sixes and sevens, what I'm going to put in this one, I've got frozen crab on the two at the back. You've just seen the little squid jigglets on that one. I think I'm going to mix my baits up a little bit. Just go with a running ledger, a size four hook, and let's go just a squid head. Small bait on a big hook. I'm not particularly fussed at the moment. I'm just, just concentrating on getting these out there. Um, and the other thing to showcase at the moment, I suppose, are these leads. So I'm using, Graham's made me from Shorecast, Graham from Shorecast has made me up some of these glow in the dark leads. And I've gone for coated leads just for keeping stuff in the boat tidy. Um, you're like, what are you talking about, Mark? Well, I like to keep the boat tidy. And I'll put too small a clip on this rig. Can't get it on. There we go. Yeah, so all we've got is a running ledger with one of Graham's glow-in-the-dark leads. Just trying them out, see what difference they make. Plus, they won't oxidise and, and go all funny. You know, sometimes when you've got wet leads in the containers in the boat um, they go all a bit gooey just get that out there 
jibber jabbering, I know, but that, that, that bream there took me by surprise. <laughs> I wasn't even fully rich yet. <laughs> we loves it, don't we? We loves it. Of all the fish to catch, first one of this season out in the boat, happy with a black bream, but we want bigger, don't we? We're after, we're after a smooth hound today, if I'm honest. That's what I'd like, get myself tidied up. So that one's fishing for bream specifically with that rig. Those two have got crab, frozen crab in their way back. And this one, it's just got that squid head on. Um, and we're golden, we're all set up. We're set up, we're fishing. It's a glorious day, big storm yesterday, 50 mile an hour winds yesterday. So everything's cloud, all the water's colored. Um, I might put some mackerel baits on in a bit, but you know what happens when you put mackerel baits on? The doggies arrive. Um, keep an eye on these, because if they go, they should go tearing off. So we're scratching, prospecting, hounding. That's the plan for today. <laughs> anyway, how are you? Oh, let's turn the seat around. Turn the seat around. I've missed you. I've been busy. New job, beavering away. Work's been busy. Get this all tidied up. Clear the decks, all nice and tidy. Get rid of that rig, so I'm not gonna use that one for the time being. Um, hooks are a little bit big on that, I think. Yeah, so, work's been busy. And when I've had time to go fishing, the weather's been shocking. So what else have we been up to? Well, Molly Moo's been treated to a new trailer, a new extreme trailer. Um, so I launched it on the old trailer yesterday, paid to keep it on a visitor berth, the boat that is, last night, and then towed the new trailer down. So when, so when I uh, recover today, it'll be recovering onto the new trailer. Um, it tows lovely, tows absolutely amazing. Um, non-loaded that is so i might have to do a little bit of tuning a little bit of fine tuning um just to get it spot on bob on might have to move things around slightly but extreme of giving me a trailer that's all the measurements to worry a spec just turn that right down to worry a spec so every, all the rollers are in the right place and then we'll check the nose weight of the trailer and see how it goes yeah, we are first time out of this year. Because you know, we loves to get out in all weathers. We're, we're not, we're not particularly, um, we're not bothered if it's cold and stuff like that. It's all down to, it's down to the wind really. Um, yeah, loving it. Out and about, in the boat. Anchor's doing its job well. One other thing I have done this year is I've, I was bigger chain, shorter length. I've now gone down the chain size, but not quite doubled the length, about one and a half times what I had previously. And I just think in the deeper water, it's gonna lift and lay a bit better. A little bit clumsy, shallow um, anchoring like we've anchored today, because it feels like a lot of chain. Um, but I just gathered it up and paid it out. Um, and I'm on a lazy line. So I've got a lazy line rigged to the front and I, I anchor from the back corner. Oh, yeah, got a bite there. <laughs> that made me jump as if on cue. I don't know if this is gonna be a doggy. Oh, it's got a bit of weight to that. It's only got that little tiny squid head on it. I don't know if that's tidal run or fish. What have we got? Is it a doggy? It's going to be a doggy, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> uh, doggy in the boat. <laughs> uh, and I haven't even got my um, disgorger out yet. But it didn't take you long to turn up, mate, did it? We was just talking. And they do some riving, these things, don't they? Let's get you unhooked, mate. Let's get you unhooked. There we go. Right. 
So I'm glad we had a black bream as the first fish of the year. Um, but we got a doggy as well. Where you go, pup? Mm. That was just on that squid head that's still on there. <laughs> I'm just going to top it off with another little bit of squid. Put another little bit on it. Just get that out. We'll get that bad boy out. There you have it. One black bream, one doggy. He was quite frisky for a doggy, wasn't he? <laughs> so at least it's fishing. We've got quite a lot of tidal run at the moment, actually. It's a flooding tide. Um, it's going to be flooding for the next six hours. I don't know if we're going to do six hours, but we're certainly going to put in our best effort, I think, this morning. Make the most of this weather anyway. It is absolutely glorious. Oh, bit of squid. Little squid lip. Oh, keep the hands clean. All right. So that's what we're up to. That's where we are. Where we are? Where we are? <laughs> that's my Hampshire accent coming out. Um, that's where we are. Let's see what else we can catch, eh? See if we can get one of the first hounds of the season to the boat. Looking forward to it. I miss the hounds. Love a hound scrap. Hounds are amazing, aren't they? But we'll see how we get on. I'll catch you in a bit. Just had quite an aggressive knock on that, but my fear is, because it's still not going like the clappers, it'd be a doggy and not a bream, even though it's the bream rig. Well, there's nothing there now. And there is some bait on there, so I'm not going to muck around changing that. When the bream come in, they hit quite hard, don't they? <laughs> they all go mad at it. And then they just strip you. It's a game of make the bait last. <laughs> right, so, bream and the doggy. Hardly setting the world on fire, but we're out here doing it. The crab rods, nothing, not a touch. But that's good because the doggies don't like hardback crab. Or I've never caught one on hardback crab. Um, and everything else seems to leave it alone as well, especially that size. There seems to be that size that suits the hounds and nothing else touches. So at least by fishing with hardback, which is really easy to get, and that you I just buy a cheap drop net off, off of um, off Amazon, fish head, chuck it over the side of the wall, I take Jasper the fishing helm with me, throw his tennis ball. Well, we've had a bit of a muck around, lift it up, empty them in the bucket and go again. And you can get 50, 60, 70 crab, do them in tens, freeze them in bags, put them in the freezer. Um, and that's all I've done now. So I've just left these out to defrost. Just cheap, just cheap bags. I don't vac pack them or anything. There's no point. I think if you vac pack them, you crush them. And that size seems to be about the right one. And the ones I prefer if I had a choice, all of these are quite dark. Um, yeah, there's not one in here actually. The ones I prefer, the ones that are yellowy green, that are recently shed and then hardened up. And because they're defrosted now, I'm just going to put them back in the cool box so they don't go go off in the sun. They want to start smelling bad. Um, just put them back in the cool box. But yeah. Hardback crab, probably the easiest and cheapest bait to collect. Um, and once the hounds are in, they love them. Especially when there's, once the numbers of hounds come in, they start getting competitive. They go mad for them and they, they hit hard. Um, oh, something's having a go at that. Might be bream stripping the bait. I'll prep some new fresh, some little ringlets, put them on, freshen up the baits. But yeah, at the moment, the crab baits, not getting touched. It's not a bad thing, because there's baits out there doing some work. If a pack of hounds do come in, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> right, let's have a look what we got here. Because that isn't going to be a bream on... No, it's going to be a doggy. You watch. 
It's gonna be a doggy. It's going well in that in that current though, because there's quite a bit of current. They just ball up, don't they? Just start spinning. At least he's a super doggy. Yeah, he's a decent size for a doggy. Let's get your tea bird off. We don't want you. We don't want you, mate. There you go. And you just nicked my squid as well. Love these shore cast sleds. You can see them straight up in the um when they come up in the water. You can see them straight away. Very bright. I don't know if they make a difference to the fishing, but they certainly um and they glow in the dark. So I don't know if they add an extra layer of attractant. Let's get another squid lit on. I'm trying to wedge my bets with the baits. Just put a whole squid on, chance for a ray. Um, this sort of area, thornback ray. I've had thornbacks here before now. If I wanted to target them specifically, I would go mackerel and squid. But what I will say is, it's like ringing the dinner bell for the doggies. Even just squid like this. They love the squid. Get that back there. As with everything though, because there is the chance, that even though we're fishing inshore and it's smaller fish, um, always set your drag. You don't want to lose a rod over the side and you never know what might take. So you can get big stingrays here, not that they'll take a squid I don't think, get big stingrays, big hounds, when the hounds do move in, I've had some of my biggest hounds along this stretch of coast, it's always a chance of a rogue bass, um, but unlikely, I think they're feeding inshore if they're feeding, and rays, there's rays as well, so you fish lighter for the smaller fish, but there's always a chance that something else might take it. Fisherman in the background, commercial fisherman. He's laid all his nets out, diagonal to the shoreline, all along here. I can't actually fish where I'd like to fish because I don't want to get anywhere near his gear. But he's lined the whole shoreline um, with hardly a gap. So he's intercepting everything and he's just cruising around. He was anchored up earlier. He did come over to have a look, see what I was doing because I was near his gear, not close, but near his gear. Um, yeah, what a stunning day. Still chilly. The old snowflake symbol on the van this morning, four degrees. <laughs> chilly shops. Let's have a look, see what that one's doing. Why oh, is that sitting so heavy in the tide? A little bit more line now. Only fishing with six ounce weights. We're only in about. I can't remember what it said now. Eight, ten feet of water. High water, it might be 12 feet, maybe. Um, shallow. But this is where the fish feed. This is where they come in short to feed. That's why the fisherman's gear is all out there. <laughs> a little jibber-jabber on this one. This has got to be a doggy, surely. Is it a doggy? Yeah, probably. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, look at that. On a tiny little hook. <laughs> and on the middle of the booms as well. Not the, not the bottom. Oh, he's taking both. <laughs> Creedy so-and-so. He's got both hooks in his nose. All right, let's get him in. Stop it, 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 stop it. I don't even want to hold you, mate. Because you're just going crackers. Oh, really? Right, let's get these hooks out. There you go. Yeah. Right, that's that boom rig. That's out there for the bream, really. Not for doggies. Um, worth mentioning how I bait these up. So I've just got a cloth over these tiny little baits. So we're only using little hooks and little squares. That's one square on the hook. And what I'd like to do is put three squares on each hook. Oh, drop that one. Slippery little suckers. Three squares on each hook. So when the bream pluck and pick at it, 
there's three little squares or that will all fit inside their mouth. So there's three on that one. Let's have a quick look at this one. Oh yeah, he made a right mess of that boom. And he's taken all the bait off of that one. So just tiny little squares. And I'll give you a show. You probably can't see it very well from all that way away. And what you get is you just, rather than taking stripping, because they're like piranhas, they just strip the bait. I just put a wet cloth over the small little prep baits that I've made so they don't spoil. Um, yeah, that's all it is. Little orange bead. Shore cast glow in the dark lead. Don't know if it's helping or not. Willing to give it a go. Get that down. And hope we don't get tides running quite strong. I'm surprised getting doggies. The doggies are on it, aren't they? Athletic doggies. And for the crab, I'm starting to run low on crab. I'll use them till I've used them. Use them or lose them. Uh, size 4 0 hook, and I'll just go straight through the abdomen for these. No fancy hooking up, no elastic, no nothing. Um, and it just presents the the crab on the hook like that. Get this one launched out a bit further back so we spread the baits apart. So I've just lifted the anchor and I've got the drone tracking the boat. See the boat underway? Just pushing along, nice and slow. And then we'll gradually build up, bit of mechanical sympathy, build it up. Not really out to go screaming around, so just push on a little bit with the speed. See if the drone can keep up, because it's quite blustery at the moment. Um, we'll put the, put the drone up in the air and follow the boat for a while. And we've moved location. So I've only moved less than a quarter of a mile further along the coast. Same contour, about eight, eight to 10 feet of water, maybe 12 feet at, at maximum depth. And if you'd like to reference where this one is, if you've watched previous videos, um, the twin uh, stingray video that I put up, I'm not far from there. I'm literally about 100 yards further along the beach from where those stingray were caught, but I'm not fishing for stingray. Um, I've got no ragworm and the water's too cold. I just put my hands in the water actually to wash them. Um, it's freezing, <laughs> the water is cold, too cold for them. But it's still early days yet, it's still early days. It's quite cool, there's plenty of crab about, and so I thought the hounds would be about, but it just doesn't look like the hounds are showing yet. But I'm not gonna call it too soon because this is a hound hotspot. Um, some nice hounds have come out from here. Um, so yeah, so we're at Park Shore, just off the shoreline at Park Shore out of casting range. So this is virgin ground that isn't fished by all the people that have their permits to fish Park Shore, myself included. Um, fish this venue quite a lot from the shore and it's quite nice to be just that little bit further offshore in the boat and this would be clean ground. Ground that isn't used. Um, so yeah, sound is saying just over eight feet. Probably got three or four feet of tide left to go. So maybe 12 feet maximum. And same, same. So we've got hardback crabs on the outer two, the boom rig with the tiny squares of squid on the left rod and a whole squid on the right rod. Possibility of a ray or a bass, bream and hounds. If they go, it's gonna be a hound. I'd be very surprised if it was anything else. Um, but a stunning day. There is no other boats out. If you can hear that noise in the distance, it's a commercial boat. He's running this generator because he's prepping whatever he's caught today. Um, he's got a lot of gear out along this coastline. I suppose they have to put a lot of gear out to be able to get anything. Um, but yeah, other than that, lovely. Can't fault it. <laughs> a day out on the boat is never a day wasted. Well, <laughs> moving didn't help. So we've moved spots to a known hound hot spot. No hounds. No hounds at all. So I've got a choice. And the choice that was open to me really was go to deeper water and look for bigger fish or cut my losses 
and get back and get this get Molly Moo on a new trailer um, and make the adjustments so I've opted for the latter it's not often that I'll cut a fishing session short but it just isn't fishing and it's a shame it is a shame but work works works required or, or needs must <laughs> can't think of what I wanted to say then um, oh, and I'd like to get the trailer sorted out so I'm gonna pack these rods up not even a sniff not even a touch on the um, on the crab baits really surprised me actually <laughs> I thought there was a chance of an early hound, but not today. So, going to pack it up. Thank you for joining me. Look forward to spending some time with you again sometime soon. From me, from here, for now, houndless. <laughs> it's goodbye. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Oh, just in, just in time, just in queue. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.